Ace of our YouTube Broccoli TV here. I got requested to make a video on how to make new lenses in the new versions of Lens Studio. This version is only used with the Web AR method I've seen here. Or there. And like the hero I am, I'm making that video. Hello. Go ahead and find us a model. It's tomato. All right, we got our tomato. Looks like it's in multiple ports, so we'll go ahead and join them. So highlight all, control J to join them. Then all we're going to want to do is add armature to it. So shift A, armature, single bone. Come to the running man on the right side, viewport display in front. And we're just going to resize. There we go. Then with your bone selected, go to edit mode, highlight that bottom ball, press E, then Z to extrude straight down. There, perfect. All right, go back into object mode, highlight your ear model first, shift to select your bone, control P with automatic weights. Perfect, highlight all, then you go to control A, all transforms. And then just test your bones, highlight your bone, pose mode, select one of the bones and rotate it and see if it moves your model around. You're good to go. Yep, looking good. So now we can just go ahead and export it. I'm going to export it as a GLB. And we can go into Lens Studio. Hey y'all, cool y'all. It's Future Broccoli here with a couple tips and tricks of the trade. I know a few of y'all going to be determined to export it as FBX. And when you do so, sometimes you won't get your materials with it. So I got a little trick for you. So what you'll do, you'll highlight your model, go to shading. Once you're in the shading tab, you'll have your image boxes. They're called nodes. And what you want to do is click into each one, and it's only the main image nodes you're clicking into, and they'll each have a name to them, like image zero here, image one, image two, and then you see how it says this is the normal, this is the metallic and roughness, and then this is the base color. So you'll click each one, and it'll appear on the left here in the viewport display. You click this little hamburger menu, image, and then put save as, and then just save it wherever you saved your model, and then go through each one and do the same thing. Save as. Image, save as. So now that when you're in Lens Studio, all you gotta do is drag those images into your asset browser. So we'll get each one. Drag them in there, drag them in there. Now you can go ahead and edit the material of your model. So base texture, that's gonna be image zero. Look at that, got you a little chocolate bar. Now I do identify as a Hershey, so don't misgender me. Anyways, you could continue going down the map. See, got your normal here. I uh, can't remember. I think that was image two. Yikes. Maybe not. I accidentally put in the wrong one. There we go. Image two here. And then we'll put the metallic right there. Oh, look at shiny. It's shiny and pretty. Uh, another issue people run into is having a file that's a little too big when they're making that uh, project. So you can go project settings and let it calculate. So the max you can use is eight megabytes. Uh, some people upload models that are way too big. It could be like 60. So I'm going to show you how you can knock that down a, a peg. So the first thing you can try is go to your meshes tab in your project folder, click on that mesh, 
go to compression type and change it to Draco and enable it. And as you see, that dropped it down by whew, almost in half, more than half, actually. So the next thing we can do is click on each image themselves and change the compression type to performance. There's also size. You can play around with that. And if low gives you a better size, then go ahead and click low. Otherwise, performance will be your go-to. If you use an old lens studio, there's a little button right here you can click. That'll get you quicker to what size you are. Let's look at that size. Almost nothing now. So you can knock off a good bit of size by doing these few things. Uh, but that's all I got for you. Let's go back to that old guy. Now that we're in Lens Studio, we'll go ahead and drag that tomato or whatever your model is into the asset browser. All right. In the newer versions of Lens Studio, what you want to do first is right click on your model and then click unpack. Once you do that, you'll be able to edit the materials, which we shouldn't need to do just in case you have to. So we'll add our head binding. Delete the face occluder. Drag that tomato prefab onto the head binding. And then resize that sucker. Right. Then we'll bring it to the front of the head binding, pretty much touching the front of the face. And I like to go a little bit below the forehead. It seems to fit better within the screen, if you ask me. All right. So now we're going to want to add our face insets. And we'll just control D and duplicate those twice. Rename them right eye, left eye. I'm using F2 to rename. You can also right click to duplicate and rename mouth. So make sure those are all set. Left eye, right eye. So you're going to want your first texture to be device camera texture and your second one to be mask. Bring your left eye up to where it should go. And then do the same with your right eye. Right about there. That looks fine. All right. So you'll take those and just drag them onto your main bone and get those in the correct positions again. You want it just touching the outside surface. Just on the outside there. All right. So let's go ahead and... At our background. So we'll create an unlit. And I got a little green in there, so we might have to go with blue. Let's see. Change your unlit base color to. Let's go yellow, actually. Add a screen image. And we'll select it as fill. Oh, material will be unlit. There we go. That's looking flat. There we go. So the material will be unlit. We'll create another render target. Rename it background. We'll change this to background. Highlight your camera object. Clear color option will be texture. Input texture will be background. So let's go ahead and test it with camera. And there we go. Looking good. So let's go ahead and add that smooth follow script. All right, to get your smooth follow script, you'll go to GitHub, Frozen Atlas, Projects and Templates. Smooth follow, public, 
smooth follow that JS, then just download the raw file and we'll drag that into our Lin Studio. Then we'll select that bottom bone. We can just drag that straight onto it. And there we go. The scene object will be the head binding. You can go ahead and delete that facing set. Smooth speed about 0.15 will be good. And as you can see, it's anchored down. Then we'll drag the bone out into empty space. And then we'll just play with the offset a little bit. All right, once you got your offsets straight, you may sometimes need to rescale it. Uh, I find the new Lens Studio is a little weird when trying to rescale with these bars. But you could just do so manually with these scale options here. Once you get it to a place where you like it, you can go ahead and publish your lens. Go to your project settings. For the preview, select one of the options there. Doesn't really matter. It's going to do some funky stuff regardless. And select your icon, which I already have one. And change the name of your lens to so whatever you'd like it to be. And you can go ahead and publish. Select your organization, your lens folder that you want to submit it to, submit your lens. You have to choose at least one category. Doesn't really matter what it is. Click publish, hidden, publish. And then once Snapchat processes your lens, you can go ahead and use it within the WebAR system. And that is it.